Atlanta. This message goes out to the whole Atlanta. Save the date because Conversation with Claire is coming back to Atlanta. If you're a fashionista from the Peach State, then this event is a must. Join Fashion Bomb Daily Magazine Editor-in-Chief Claire Summers and special guest Cynthia Bailey, I am Alonzo Arnold, Ariaka Daly of Virgin Hair Depot, Kim Blackwell, and No IG Jeremy on Saturday, October 13th for a celebration of fashion and fearlessness. A VIP ticket gets you bikes, drinks, and riveting conversation on breaking into the business and building a strong brand. Start planning your outfit now. The theme, Logo Love. Get your tickets at cwcatl.eventbrite.com. See you there. All right, y'all. <clears throat> this season premiere, I mean season finale of Insecure. So can we have some real adult conversation in this moment? I just finished watching the season premiere and I'm left feeling like that's it. Like, I don't feel nothing. And don't get me wrong, the show is excellent. I love the show, but I just, I'm feeling incomplete. Like, first of all, the show was only 30 minutes, then we got eight episodes. What the fuck is that? Now we gotta wait a whole motherfucking another year for four hours worth of TV? Like, it's just like, like essentially, that's what Insecure is. Four hours worth of TV, the whole season. I'm... I'm feeling a way, you know what I'm saying? And I'm so thankful to HBO for giving a black girl like Issa an opportunity to, to bring her vision to life. But I'm just on some, girls got an hour, they got 50, 11 episodes, and they got 20 damn seasons. Like, I, I, I just really considered what Issa had going on with Insecure, the black version of girls. Oh, like, the shit just went off, like, <laughs> Y'all, I, I, I am so conflicted right now. I don't know what to feel. I don't really know what's going on. I can't. I can't effortlessly just tell you what this season was about. Like, it just felt too short. And I'm feeling cheated and I'm feeling dissatisfied. And again, not because the show is bad or poor quality. This episode was excellent, as was all the episodes excellent. Regina King did a great job in, 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 in directing this one, but I just feel empty. I feel like I've been left hanging, and it's not like y'all are telling me, oh, the next season's gonna come on in three months. Then I'd be like, oh, okay, but this, uh, um, something ain't right, and I'm gonna need somebody to help put in the words what I'm feeling right now. But at any rate, let's just jump into this episode and knock out this, because this will be the last time we'll hear about this shit for a whole nother year. Um, Issa trying to get support from the local businesses and people around town for her rally. I mean, for her uh, block party thing. Isn't that just so funny? I know that feeling all too well. As a matter of fact, that feeling is like two or three days fresh because I sat on a planning committee here in Atlanta and we threw here in Miami and we threw a rally two days ago. Y'all will see the footage soon for Andrew Gillum trying to get people to register to vote and to come out and get pumped about the election and whatnot. And y'all, I'm going to tell you something. Black people, you know, it is so hard to get us motivated about things, especially for things that are not in our natural purview. Um... It's just hard. Like, I was just disappointed at the level of friends that I invited to the rally, people that I personally asked to come support, who didn't come, family members who I expected to be there who didn't show up. It's just really hard to get us motivated about things if it doesn't involve rap music or, you know, free Section 8 vouchers. Now, now you tell a bitch the Section 8 list about to open up, bitch, you will have 900 niggas standing outside, uh, whatchamacallit, or if you tell them, you know, it's Black Friday and Target giving out TVs for $99, they be wrapped around the corner. But anything else that's that, you know, that they ain't used to, it's kind of hard for them to come on out or let it be some foolishness, let it be sugar finna fight Vonda. 
You know what I'm saying, bitch? Motherfuckers are drive from 90 miles away and park their car down to the parking lot to walk up and down the block to see what's about to go on or let it be a parade or something, you know. It's just really weird. So I was able to relate to Issa's feeling of being overwhelmed because I just experienced that this week. And although our event was a huge success, it just troubled me that um, so many of us don't know how to care. And so many of us don't know the shit that we should be caring about. We just don't. And I just had to reconcile the fact that Q, you can't get mad that your interests and your passions are not everybody else's interests and passions. And I left it at that. But I was able to relate. Um, Lawrence meets up with his dad. Yes, honey, I love that man. Name. He plays uh, Special Agent Cooper on uh, Blacklist. He played in the Five Harpies. Well, there's something about his voice I love. But moreover, his three-minute stint he did on the screen was very powerful when talking about, you know, wanting to get into a relationship and, you know, he just wants somebody with no baggage like him and mom. And he was like, do you, huh, you think you and your mom didn't have any baggage? We had a lot of baggage and we worked through it. You know, and it's just so funny because as I'm starting to get my feet wet in the dating pool again, and with me being 35, expecting to date somebody, I'll go like, you know, 32 up to like 47. It's kind of like my little range. Um, I'm like, yeah, at this age, people don't been through some shit. People gonna have baggage, whether that baggage looks like a divorce, whether that baggage looks like a separation, whether that baggage looks like a child or two or three, a repossession, a bankruptcy, you know, they've been hurt a time or two, a couple abortions, you know what I'm saying, a prison record, I mean, you know, bitch, we almost middle-aged people, motherfuckers, it's gonna have baggage, you know. I'm just asking in the words of Erica Badu that they pack night, okay? I'm willing to deal with a bitch with a carry-on and maybe one personal item, but bitch, you can't have no check bag. Nah, -uh, no, 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 baby, nah, no, 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 no. if you finna come and get in here like where I did like Robin, where I did all this. You can't bring all that into all this, okay? You could bring this much and this much, but you can't bring a roller bag like a stripper. You cannot walk up in here like a stripper of getting before her shift with a big ass roller bag coming into my space or whatever. So I told him to get with dad was saying though that you guys have baggage and you work through it. So Molly, we back now to the office and Molly gets called in the office. She thinks she in trouble quiet as it's kept. When they said the partners are in there with Torian, I honestly thought Torian had like dry snitched on her or just said, you know, filed a complaint on her or whatever to the HR or people. But they were like, no, we actually like you and Torian very together. We, we want to put you two young people on the case. And Torian was like, you know, I am sure uh, the client would appreciate how aggressive Molly is. And the client, the, the, the partners didn't catch it, but Molly caught the shade. Now, here is the thing. In that moment, I was like, damn, this is bad because this is going to positively reinforce that ruthless behavior that Molly put on in the damn workplace. And she's going to feel like she was right in what she did when she was just feeling like, damn, maybe I did overstep. You know what I'm saying? Um, and as we later see that shit came back to bite her in her ass. So they getting ready to go out for Issa's birthday and Molly pulls up at the same time Nathan pops up with some flowers. Is it me or did Molly do the right thing? Um, what would I have done? Yeah, okay, me person, just the way my messy ass operate, bitch, me and Nathan both would have walked up to the door and then, you know, I would have been sitting there like this wanting an explanation. However, I do have some friends that would have done the same thing Molly did. All in all, considering the fact that Nathan had been gone for a month, Issa was just starting to get over it, and it was her birthday, I'm going to side with Molly on this. Yeah, motherfucker, get lost. Scram, vamos, child, see you later. Come back tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, come back tomorrow. And I just would have told, I probably would have told Nathan, and don't tell Issa I sent you away. 
I, you know, I just would have did it different. I would have been like, Nathan, let my girl have this one day. It's her birthday. Come back tomorrow. This will be you and I's little secret. That's what I would have did. You know what I'm saying? Nevertheless, I agree with what Molly did, nigga. Get the fuck on, because it's a party. So then Issa sees Lawrence down to the theater, to the, to, the, to the screen on the green. That's what we used to call it in college. Screen on the green. Land this green for all my Florida State University graduates. Um... They keep teasing us with these dreamy sequences with, you know, Issa sees Lawrence and they, you know, get stuck gazing in each other's eyes and they launch into conversation and they're so familiar with one another that the conversation feels good and it leaves us feeling like, okay, you know, are they going to get back together? What's going on? This, that, and the third. That was interesting. Then they all go sit down. I mean, Molly and Issa go sit down with Kelly. Bitch. When Kelly said, we sitting here looking like all three Jennifer Hudson's, I almost called AT&T U-verse and canceled my HBO. Leave me with regular. I don't need to be able to watch this shit no more. And cut my internet off too because I don't need to watch it there either. I choked on my pound cake. That shit was hilarious. And mama was not lying. Jennifer Hudson don't took me through so many changes. And I, yeah, yeah, quiet as it's kept. It's only because Lil' Kim change has been more drastic that Jennifer Hudson don't catch the hell that she truly deserved. But that shit was funny. So then I want to talk about this. Molly runs into Jared. They're catching up or whatever. The guy walks up and says, hey, I'm going back to the seat. Get me a drink. Molly runs off. Gator goes off. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. That scene infuriated me. And it infuriated me in particular with black women. Because I'm so, because I, I occupy so many black female spaces, I see and I'm not saying other women don't do it. I don't know what them other hoes do because I don't occupy their spaces. So it may be an all woman thing. Let me put that out there because y'all know y'all get super fucking sensitive the minute I say anything, but I don't give a fuck. I don't occupy those spaces. So I don't know what other women do, but I know what the black ones do. And people, you know, on one token, I hear a lot of black women say things about DL dudes and gay dudes and I wish they would just come out and I would da, 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 da. and then you know when we throw that in and in fact they're in toxic masculinity it, it's funny because I always say I'm actually glad I'm gay I would never want to be a straight man because there's so many fucking rules on how you must act in order to be perceived gay the boy was in line getting popcorn the dude came up and said, hey, I'm going back to our seats. The first thing in your mind is he gay. Like so much so to the point that you couldn't finish the conversation. Then you ran your ass halfway across the goddamn field to go back and spread that he's gay. All because what? A guy and a guy can't go to an event together? Lawrence was there with his homeboys. Is it because the boy, like, what about that automatically make you say he's gay? And I see the reason it infuriated me is because I've sat in these spaces and I've watched women do the dumbest things or observe the dumbest things and say he's gay. Oh, you know, I saw him in Ross and in his basket, he had a pair of pink underwear, that nigga gay. Or I saw him put a belt on, that nigga gay. Or I saw the way he was chewing that chicken, that nigga gay. You know what I'm saying? Or I saw him at the gas station and he had another nigga in the car, that nigga gay. You know what I'm saying? Or I saw him standing in line with this gay boy behind him, that nigga gay. You know what I'm saying? And never once did it encounter the gay boy behind him could have been his nephew, could have been his cousin, could have been his brother. In this situation, it was. So it just bothered me because... It opened up, it ripped the band-aid off of some old wounds or off of some continuing wounds, however the fuck I need to word it. Um, and we need to do better, y'all, with these automatic assumptions. And then that's not just about gay, that's about everything. Like, fuck, let people be and stop it with all these goddamn 
stupid ass social rules. I wouldn't give a fuck if the nigga was there by himself with the dude. That's the shit that y'all don't understand that drives black men into all of these crazy molds that they have to try to fit and they get so fucking depressed because me and my homeboy can't even go to the movies and fellowship as brothers without people thinking we get like I remember shit like when I was in high school even in college me and my boys would go to the movie and they would do stupid shit like if it's four of us we rode in the car together and mind you we in the car together like this but when we get to the movie they sit in one seat in between one another so people would not think we was all gay like it's just we got to do better y'all at any rate this is about insecure and not my fucking baggage so, uh, you know, Lawrence comes back and joins Issa on the blanket and talks about her event and she starts talking about, you know, the rejection and all of the no's and it's just so funny because the way Lawrence looked and was like, everything coming out of your mouth sounds very familiar and I think she caught it too. But the fact that she was now going through what he was going through last season, you know, it kind of rattled him and he was like, all right, you know, so you basically... You know, you dumped me, cheated on me, gave me the hard time about this. Now you see, you now you see what it's about. You know, and he dipped and went back over to his homeboys and I dug it. I actually like where Lawrence is in his life right now and in his journey. Um so they get back, well, after the thing, Issa goes and talks to the girl from Tiffany's event. She networks with a trade information or whatever. And at that moment, I had not put two and two together that that's who Lawrence was. That, that's, but that's not, that's not the same girl from the church. Okay, I was right. Never mind. So anyway, Issa and Molly having a little sleepover. Issa and the Harry Puss. And Molly reveals to Issa that Nathan came over and Issa loses her shit. Um... I do like the fact that after Issa settled down, she was like, I get that you were trying to help, but you should have told me I'm not like you. I don't cancel niggas left and right. And basically she was saying over oh, stupid shit. And she was absolutely right and low key calling Molly a hoe or, you know, a serial you hoe at that. On top of that, though, I love the fact that Issa went in on Molly's ass about this mean streak she's been on. She's like, you know, you've been really mean. You've been really cutthroat. And I love that she asked Molly because I said this in the previous video. You that shit you pulled with Torian at the office was dead ass wrong. And you're going to be partner of a bitch. You're going to be partnering all alone. Ain't nobody going to want to work with you. And lo and behold, when Molly took her ass back to work, and tried to work with Tori and Tori was like I ain't on that case no more like I got off of it and I'm gonna do you one better I'm gonna go over here and work with these ladies so now it's all three black people in the office are on one side and you out there out on a limb no support no whatever whatever and you stuck to do this shit by yourself I hope it works out for you Miss Molly girl but it looked like your ass is in danger and you deserve every minute of it and the way that they looked at you when they were working they just felt so vindicated Molly you deserved every fucking minute of that because you were being overly aggressive trying to be partner but you ain't gonna have the people ain't gonna want to work with you and I tell people all the time you don't want to lead people by fear and intimidation and by power. You want people to follow you because they respect you, not because they're scared of you. And that's going to be the situation. If people do listen to Molly, it's going to be because they're scared of her. And, and they're going to really give her ass a hard time if she ever makes it to that partner stage. What I do like about it is, though, Molly did call Andrew, but Andrew was not here for it. Baby, is it me? Or did Andrew look good with all that dark black hair just sitting over them big shoulders and chest? I said, listen, Karate Kid, you can come kick my ass anytime. Literally and figuratively. Uh, how do you want it? Uh, yeah, let me stop. How does it feel? Okay, so anyway, coming up as a, ooh, roll my kiki. Yes, I'm for real. Uh... So then, you know, I like the fact that Andrew was like, fuck that, you know, and that's true. You can't keep going through life fucking over people and calling back and apologizing. It don't work like that. And he gave you several chances. He apologized. And Molly, you just a fucking dick and an asshole. And you wasting your money going to therapy because that it, obviously it ain't helping you. You need to go see the old lady under the tree. 
So Lawrence, the girl finally goes on her date and bitch is with Lawrence. And I'm like, oh my God, this is the girl Issa is working with. And see, this is the shit that's throwing me. This is why the shit needs to be an hour long. This is why it needs to be longer this season because there's so much unresolved stuff. Like what happens when Issa and the girl finally do do the block party event together and the girl shows up with her date and it's Lawrence. We got to wait a year to see this. Like, I'm, I'm just not really feeling it. Y'all can probably tell in my tone and inflection, I'm not super duper hype about this Insecure um, review. Nathan then shows up. He shows up um, and he gives Issa that explanation. Now, let me ask y'all a question. Ladies out there, are y'all buying the explanation? Have you ever done that before? Um, he is telling her the truth. I do believe it. Um, I've done what Nathan has done. I've done it to family. I've done it to friends and I've done it in relationships. You know, there, there's sometimes things happen and you just get so in your head. And then this is so new and fresh and it feels so right. And you get scared and you run. I've done that before. Like I, my last relationship, as a matter of fact, mine just like seven years ago. Well, be it'd be nine because it's when we got together um you know we were official for maybe like three three weeks or whatever and things were good and it was feeling great and i was scared and it was homecoming and i went to homecoming and on the way to homecoming i called him and broke up with him um for no other reason than there was just this new surge of emotions that i could not compartmentalize and i was like the best way to get rid of this uncomfortable feeling is to cut this out altogether and um you know he was real upset and went off on me and when i came back from homecoming i realized wow i was just scared and nervous that's just one example but i have done that before although it sucks I definitely buy Nathan's uh, explanation. And if I was Issa, I would give him another chance. Considering the fact that she claimed he the only one that make her feel so good and touch on inside parts and this, that, and the third. I would give him another chance. Would you? Um, yeah, well, it don't matter. matter. I guess we got to wait a fucking year for four more hours worth of Insta. I I'm just feeling the way, y'all. At any rate, that's the season of finale of Insecure, y'all. You know, I'm sorry if I've delivered an underwhelming review, but honestly, it just ending, in my opinion, so abruptly and being so short just kind of left me feeling mm, kind of underwhelmed. I'll call y'all later. Be sure to like and subscribe. Bye.